How's everybody doing? My name is JC and this is your first time here. I want to give you a warm welcome. If you follow me because of the cooking recipes, you're probably freaking out just about now asking yourself, what is this guy doing in the garage? Well, here at the Cuban Redneck DIY channel, we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays and DIY stuff on Fridays. However, a lot of you have been asking me to add a category to the channel and I was thinking about calling it Rant Wednesdays. What is Rant Wednesday? We're basically going to be calling out manufacturers who make crappy products and some of the woke companies who have been behaving very anti-American as of late, in my opinion. Anyhow, if this is uh, something that you think I should pursue or perhaps uh, of interest, please make a comment below. Let me know. Give me some ideas. Let me know what I, uh, you know, some of the topics that I should include. For example, uh, one of the most requested uh, things for that category has been, uh, what is my opinion, what, what is the build quality of my Frigidaire appliances that I use uh, during my cooking videos. And let me tell you something, man, I need to make a video about that. Those, those things, I don't know. Anyways, stay tuned for that. Uh, today I wanna talk to you about custom LED light fixtures. Why custom? Well, very simply, LED fixtures come in 12, 18, 24, 36, you know, uh, 48 and so on. Uh, but if you need one that is like, you know, 29 and a half or, you know, 52.5, uh, you're going to have an issue with that. You either have to uh, adapt to what's in the market or uh, the other solution is to go custom. Making a custom LED light fixture is really not that difficult. This video is somewhat of a follow-up to my uh, Harbor Freight uh, workbench uh, modifications and assembly video. Uh, towards the end, I made a case for why did I, uh, I decided to change the 28K, 150, uh, 15 watt, 150 luminant uh, lights that it came with. And instead, I opted for some 6 watt LED spotlights. The problem with that is that I went from one side of the spectrum to the opposite side. While the OEM lights had a lot of light in the center and the corners were dark, the spotlights are the complete opposite. So as you can see, I have a hot spot here, I have a dark spot here, I have another hot spot here. Here's what they look like in the dark. As you can see, there's a lot of room there for improvement. So what I decided to do is instead of adding one more uh, spotlight in the center, which I don't really think is gonna cure the problem because it's gonna be very similar to what we call an audio comb filtering, which you're gonna have bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, uh, uh, that is really not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for more of a floodlight, the entire space to be uh, lit up. And that is the reason why I decided to make some custom uh, LED light fixtures. So check this out. Before we get going, I want to address the cost factor and what is an LED light fixture. First, the cost. Although the custom made-to-fit factor is more important, I know there's going to be people out there saying, well, this is just not worth it. So here it is. I will be using a pure white 12-volt 5-meter LED strip, which cost me $5. I'm using 12 volts because these are going to get powered by my off-grid solar panel system. The easy or sure I say the cheesy way of doing this is to peel and stick the LED strip to the inside of the top section of the workbench since it is already a box. The issue with that is heat. LED lights including LED strips generate quite a bit of heat. I keep a lot of chemicals around my workbench including acetone, lacquer thinner and others that don't behave well to heat. So sticking them directly to the workbench is a no-no. Let's take a look at this cross section of the Harbor Freight shop light from one of my earlier videos. What you're seeing here is a piece of extruded aluminum being used as a heat sink to hold a strip of LED lights in the center. To accomplish something like this, I could have picked up a 4 foot 1 inch channel like this one and call it a day. However, the $16 cost would have put a huge dent to my budget. Instead, I opted for this 8 foot screen enclosure frame connector from Lowe's costing less than 12. In other words, the build cost for each of my LED light fixtures is around $11. I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a 4 foot 5K LED light fixtures that cheap. With that said, let's get building. Well, 
Right. Uh, one of the reasons that I chose this matter, and I think it's perfect for this application, uh, is because of these two uh, screw guys here, which allow us to use uh, self-tapping screws uh, and a screw the end cap right into place without having to worry about uh, any provisions for fasteners, rivets, or anything of that nature. So, um, as far as the end caps are concerned, you have several choices. Uh, I will be using a one inch alum uh, 116 angle from also from Lowe's. I just happen to have this. If you don't know that they have uh, pieces cut already to the width of this, uh, that you can buy also at Lowe's. So, you have uh, several choices as far as the end caps. Uh, concern. So um, if you care about uh, the end caps, you know, being sealed, not showing, uh, I would suggest that you use two pieces. One will go down this way, okay, and the second one will go up this way. So what you do is you will drill here and here and uh, put the two pieces in place, put your, you know, your self tappers through it, and uh, you, you're good to go. So the, uh, the objective is to have a little bit of an offset there uh, to allow heat to dissipate and nothing, you know, don't transfer the heat to wherever it's connected, whether it's the ceiling, here at the workbench or whatever. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and mark our, uh, our end caps. Let's cut that and uh, get going. Okay, so here we have a few pieces cut, and uh, I wanted to show you guys uh, what I was talking about last time uh, I was cutting this. I said, I don't understand people gonna, I don't know if you're gonna understand that, but anyways, uh, so basically, uh, if you're gonna, if you want to have end caps, uh, just basically one piece is gonna go like that to close the end cap, and the second piece goes over here for the mounted bracket. So there you have it with an offset, and you can adjust that offset. I'm probably gonna mount it, I'm probably gonna put it like that, about a half an inch to two quarters of an inch. And uh, that is the end cap of the fixture. So with that said, let's start installing our LEDs and we'll go from there. To install our LEDs, what we need to do is uh, stretch it out and see how close can we get uh, to one of the cutting sections. Uh, just cut it right there at the line uh, from you know at the end of the of the metal uh, whatever length you're gonna do uh, now from here to here uh, you're gonna have to solder this thing back together however uh, there are some solutions out there with like glue and several other options if you don't have a soldering iron but uh, I would probably recommend you solder it. so with that said let's put this guy together Okay, uh, all four channels installed. We go one on the top, there, there. And uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, get the uh, soldering uh, iron going. And we're gonna put a spot of solder uh, on each of the connecting points uh, so that we, before we put the wires in. And I guess then we'll just uh, put them all. Um, you have to be careful because this thing, there's a positive and negative here. You have to follow positive to positive, negative to negative. You could do a positive to negative, but then you have to make sure all of them are in the same format. And what it's going to do is going to quadruple uh, your voltage requirement. So this requires 12 volts. 
if you put them in series, uh, they will require 48 volts. Uh, with that said, uh, let's get some soldering done and uh, we'll take it from there. And the most important thing is the, is the test. Are they going to be, uh, you know, are they going to have the brightness that I'm seeking? Uh, I've seen them in the gunnels of bolts and they look very bright and they have like a very flood like um, look. It, it, they don't have a spotlight, uh, uh, you know, look to them. So uh, I hope uh, this works out. Let's, uh, let's get soldering. Right, that is it. Let's uh, to do a test. But before we do a test, I want to make sure that we have no reference to ground. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to measure. Make sure we don't have any short to ground. So that's open and this is short. So I'm gonna go from chassis, chassis ground here to one. That one is open. That one is open. Okay, good. Right, now let's go ahead and put our test probe in here. And time for the moment of truth. All right, let's test this thing. Okay, and here we go. Wow, that's pretty bright. And uh, I guess what we need to do is we need to turn off the lights and see how bright this is. Truly is. All right, so with the lights off, Let's go ahead and plug this guy up. Wow, that's nice. And that's only one of them. So uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the other three and do the final installation for, uh, for our final evaluation. Uh, but I can tell you off the bat, a flood light, a lot more even light. Uh, I, like, I like the color temperature and uh, that looks good. So uh, let's go ahead and mount them. All right, so here we are. Uh, very pleased with the end results. Uh, the uh, very bright and the um, all the colors look very realistic. Um, really nice uh, color temperature and uh, definitely uh, worth the uh, worth the upgrade uh, not only for the money savings uh, part of it but also for the uh, the performance part of it uh, my name is JC this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel and thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you on my next video please support this channel by subscribing liking and sharing and don't forget to hit that notification bell thank you